All right, so we're going to start chapter 8 today. Um, this becomes a very critical uh, component to algebra. Um, it's, um, I'll just give you, I'll give you kind of a, uh, an example here real quick. So algebra, and we're going we're gonna to work on this, um, in this class during the next couple chapters, but this, this is a very common, okay, as much as, so you've worked with lines, right, graphing lines, okay, we've done that. This is the next thing that we graph. Okay, it's called a parabola, um, but it becomes one of the uh, most um, kind of prolific functions that we will see throughout the rest of high school, okay? Uh, there's a lot of properties that exist with this that make it really nice for us uh, to uh, kind of model real-world situations with uh, that graph, okay? Um, like costs and profits and revenues and those types of things for businesses, uh, manufacturers will focus heavily on an understanding of that curve right there, okay? So that's kind of where this stuff is going. We need to be able to start working with um, exponents that are greater than one inside our equation. Well, the build-up to that is learning 8.1 and 8.2 uh, kind of foundational concepts for us to be able to get to equations that have not an x to the first anymore in them, but an x to the second power. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's kind of where this is going to lead to. And if we can learn those, the progression from there will then be, okay, well, what do we do with an equation that has like x to the third in it? And then x to the fourth, and then x to the fifth. So we're going to start learning how to solve um, these varying types of equations. Now, this is a very, very large um, kind of content area. We're going to, we're going to briefly, I won't say briefly, but we'll... We'll investigate part of it, but my college algebra class that I teach to juniors and seniors for 18 weeks spends most of its time talking about how that graph and that x squared impacts everything else in, in algebra. Okay? So there's, there's a lot to this that you're going to kind of pick up little bits of this year, more of it next year, more of it the following year, and then more of it the final week following year after that. Does that make sense? So this is something that's going to be repetitive. Um, and each year you get in a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Um, but the terminology that we're going to use is consistent from course to course. Uh, and we have to know this. We have to know these terms because I'm going to use them. And if I say, uh, tell me the leading term of this trinomial um, written in descending order, and you don't know any of those words, you're not going to be able to do that, right? Okay. Uh, so we're going to have some vocabulary here that we need to make sure that we, one, we learn it, two, we use it. Okay. Uh, so we can have conversations about this stuff uh, appropriately. Okay. Um, what? what? Uh, it's half school year. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, well, not six months, but... Nine, nine months, about four months, four and a half months. Yeah, about four months. Huh? Yeah, because you have three months off, right? Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, so monomials. So, so what's the what's the prefix mono mean? I mean. Yeah, means one. Okay. Uh, so nomial, okay, uh, refers to a term, okay. So when we talk about nomials in mathematics, we refer to a term, okay? Uh, or you might even think about it as an, as an object, okay? So monomial means we have one term or one object, okay? Uh, so by definition, it's a real number, okay? It could be a variable. It could be the product of a real number and a variable. And it could be a product of a real number and multiple variables with exponents, okay? So those are all things that classify something as a monomial. And these are all examples. If I look at this first one, 18... 18 is a monomial because it is a real number, right? Okay. If I look at x, x is a monomial because it is a variable. 2xy is a monomial because it is a product of a real number and one or more variables, right? 3.2xy to the third is a monomial because it's a product of a real number 
in one or more variables with whole number exponents. This is the same thing. Now, a lot of times, like one third or a over three, maybe you don't see. Well, that's not a product. It is. Now, you see, you probably think division when you see that, right? But it could be rewritten as a times one third, right? Yeah. One third is a real number. A is a variable, and we have a product of those two things. So, one third a or a over three is a monomial. Okay. What symbols in your in your mathematics experience? Okay, in your operations, what symbols are missing in all those examples? We have multiplication, we have division. Which ones are missing? Addition. Subtraction and addition, right? Okay. I, I don't want to say this as, as your definition, but that's an identifier to tell you whether you have monomials or not. Okay. Are there plus signs and minus signs yeah. in any of those? No, no. No. So monomials will be a collection of things, numbers, variables, variables with exponents that do not have pluses and minuses sticking them together. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? I think maybe viewing it from that end or that perspective might make recognizing a monomial a little bit easier. Okay? Um, something we like to talk about is what we call the degree of the monomial. Okay? Uh, this is, it's not the most important degree that we're going to talk about. Okay? Because there's one of, of the entire statement here in a little bit that's more important. But some of your questions in your homework will ask this. Uh, so they ask you what the degree of a monomial is. It's simply the sum. It's the sum of all your variable exponents. Okay. Um, in parentheses here, I've got degree of a non-zero constant is zero. So a constant is just a number. It has no variable part. So four here is a non-zero constant, right? It's not zero. So that means it's not non-zero. And there's no variable part, so it's constant. This would mean that we call, we identify this as degree zero. Okay? Degree zero. Okay? If my constant is the number zero, if my constant is the number zero, we say it has no degree. Okay? The, meaning that the degree doesn't exist. Does that make sense? Having zero degree and a degree that doesn't exist are two different things. Okay? Um, if I look at, let's say, this one here, okay, what, if I look at, I'm just looking at the exponents, what is the degree of that monomial? If it's the sum of all the exponents, this first one, 5x to the first. That's first degree, right? I do. Okay, so degree is equal to 1. What about this one? What's the degree there? 2. Uh, no, no, that's 0. Uh, no, 1. 3. It's the sum of your exponents. So three. What about the next one? Um, seven. Seven. Degree three plus four is seven. Okay. So all we're doing there, and then those are going to be made two or three in your homework that ask you that. Um, the degree of a monomial is just the sum of its exponents. Okay. Now, for the most part, early on, we're not going to be seeing like x cubed y to the fourth. Most time we see for the things that we're going to do in this class, it's going to be like x to the third only, like, or 2x to the third, or 5x to the third. Or it might be 2y to the fourth, or 5y to the fourth. But it won't incorporate both of them usually early on. Okay? Um, the next type of term okay, that we're going to talk about is called a polynomial. Okay? What's poly mean? Multiple. Multiple. means many, right? Okay? Uh, so, nomial, again, meaning terms, so poly meaning many terms, okay, or multiple terms. Um, the one thing about this that gets kind of confusing for some people is that a monomial is actually classified as a polynomial. It's like a subgroup of polynomials, okay? Um, but a, a monomial or a sum or difference of monomials is what we classify as a polynomial. Would you guys agree that this is, if I highlight this, this is one... Two, three, and then we got four terms, right? Four monomials combined together with adding and subtracting creates what we call a polynomial. Does that make sense? Okay. So we got monomials up here, and we start adding and subtracting monomials. Collectively, 
this entire thing, that entire thing is called a polynomial. Does that make sense? Okay. Stop it! You're fine. All right, so we've got, I'm just going to give you kind of a flow chart here real quick. Everything can be called a polynomial. Okay? So if I have one term, it can be called a polynomial. If I have two terms, it can be called a polynomial. If I have three terms, it can be called a polynomial. Four, five, six, seven be called polynomials, right? However, if it is one term, you can call it a polynomial, but one term better classified as a monomial. Okay? Two terms. Two terms would be better classified as a, what do you think? What's the prefix? So mono is the prefix for one. What's the mono for two? Okay, bi. Okay, so this would be binomial, right? So if I've got, if I've got, uh, last class I had this example. I don't know where it went. It was inappropriate, Annika. Okay, so this is a, this, this attaches a camera, right? Okay. What do we call that if it attaches a camera to it? No, tripod would be three of those, right? This is one of those. Monopod. This is a monopod. Okay. If I have three, it's a tripod, right? If I have two, it's called a bipod. Okay. Um, how's it work? What do you mean how's it work? Like a, so like a bipod, you usually have like a, like you, you end up being like the um, stabilizer of it. Does that make sense? So then, I mean, I can't just set that and just let it sit there, right? So I've got to be a component to this to hold it so it doesn't, so a bipod would be the same way. I just got two. A lot of weapons have bipods on them. Does that make sense? Like a rifle, you can put a bipod on a rifle so you got those two legs to come off of it. That would be up called a bipod. Um, and then, so if I've got three, you guys just said three would be a tripod, so with polynomials, it would be a tri trinomial. Good. Okay. So whenever we classify something as a monomial, we can also call it a polynomial. Okay. But is every polynomial a monomial? No. No, because a polynomial could be a binomial, trinomial, or it could be a four term, five term. When we get beyond three terms, so four terms, five terms, six terms, they just classify themselves as polynomials, right? We don't call them like a quadnomial or a quintinomial or something like that, okay? Um, is that cool? All right. So that's the, the importance of that is because later on we'll multiply a monomial times a monomial. We'll multiply a binomial times a binomial or a binomial times a trinomial. And I'll, and I'll say those words. I'll say take this binomial, multiply it by this trinomial. And that will teach, that will, when you, when you hear that phrasing, it elicits a procedure that we've been taught. Okay, and I'll obviously teach you that, uh, but that's terminology that we have to know. Um, so this would be a polynomial. Does that make sense? Okay. The the pluses and minuses are important here. We're, our, our goal, guys, is going to be essentially to, at least in this first section, to rewrite polynomials in a more simplified, efficient manner. Okay. So that 3x to the 4 I'm going to highlight. I'm going to highlight this positive 5x squared. You guys remember combining like terms previously, right? Yeah. I'm going to highlight uh, this negative 7x. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Or we got to talk about what what establishes like terms for us. So. Uh, good question, but we'll, we'll get there soon. Uh, the only thing I want to make sure I'm highlighting those, I didn't just highlight the real number and the variable, right? What did I highlight in front? The plus or the minus, right? Okay. So I want to make sure that we understand that that yellow one is negative 7x. That is the monomial. Does that make sense? Okay. Positive 5x squared is another monomial. This 3x to the fourth is an understood positive 3x to the fourth, right? I want to make sure that when we do this, when we recognize monomials that are part or making up a polynomial, 
that we attach the sign with them. Okay. Why? It was right there, and I couldn't see it. Oh. So what we're going to be in, so I said we're going to talk about the degree of the monomial, which is just the sum of the exponents for all the variables. The m most interesting thing or the most useful thing that we're going to talk about is the degree of the polynomial. Okay? And that is essentially just saying if we were to go through and look at every single monomial, look at every single monomial and identify each one's degree, the degree of the polynomial is the largest one of those. Does that kind of make sense? So if I look at one above, okay, that first blue one that I highlighted, 3x to the fourth, that's a degree four monomial, right? If I look at the 5x squared, that's a degree two monomial. Negative 7x to the first is a degree one, and one is a degree zero. Now I'll show you real quick why one is a degree zero. What exponent could I put on that x right there so that I still have 1 and not 1x? One this x right here that I just added in, what, what exponent could I put here so that I really have only 1? But I don't change that amount. Yeah. 0. Because x to the 0 is what? 1. one. So that simplifies to 1 times 1, which is just 1, one right? So do you see there why we would say that constant of one or any number, like six down in the chart, is degree zero because the exponent for its variable is a zero. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. I like it. I think it's taller than me. Oh, God. Oh, I've heard. Yeah, that's definitely taller. Well, no, I'm still taller than you. Um, oh, so, if I look, so if we look at that example up there, because we're able to identify each one of those as a fourth degree, second degree, first degree, zero degree, if I ask you what the degree of the entire polynomial is, the entire highlighted phrase, it's the greatest of those. So it would be a fourth degree polynomial. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, so then I, I just give you here this chart. Um, Examples of certain degrees. So it's just in order: zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. So six. So this is this is referred to as a constant. Okay. We talked about this at the beginning of the year. There's no variable there, right? On that six. No. So when we evaluate for different values of x, my output that I get is always six, right? When something is always the same amount, we say it's constant, right? Annika is constantly talking, right? So it's something that it always does, right? Okay, so uh, that's the word constant. Six is always six. It's constantly six, so we call it a constant, okay? So that's degree zero, okay? Now, if I look at the next one, 5x plus 9. 5x plus 9, what is the exponent for that x? One, okay? Now, if I were to, so it's a degree one. If we were to graph 5x plus 9, what type of shape are you going to get when you graph it? Like if I say y equals 5x plus 9. You're going to get a line. Okay. So instead of calling it constant, you see that we, our name for using that degree is called a linear. Okay. Because the result is a line. Does that make sense? Okay. So anything that has a degree 1, the largest exponent for the polynomial, if it's a degree 1, you're always going to get a line. Okay. Now the next one is degree 2. Okay. Now, degree two, like I said earlier, is always going to give you something that looks like this. Okay. Now, as we go through the rest of this course into Algebra 2, into Algebra 3, or pre-calculus, or integrated 4, or whatever you decide to choose, we will talk about how maybe we can get this thing uh, to do something like that. And we can change the way it looks. Okay. Or maybe, excuse me. Maybe we can move it left and right, okay? But those things right there are called quadratic, okay? When we have a power of 2 being your degree, okay, when 2 is the degree of your polynomial, we had just had this name for it called a quadratic, okay? Um, so uh, they're like synonyms. What's a synonym? Okay, so a word that means the same thing for, for something, right? Okay. Um, 
So like degree two is a synonym for quadratic. Quadratic is a synonym for degree two. Does that make sense? Degree three is the next one. The synonym for that is we call it a cubic. Does that make sense? When you take something and raise it to the third power, don't you call it a cube? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's where we're getting that word. Okay. Um, fourth degree is called a quartic. Okay. Quart means four, right? Okay. We talk about quarters. We talk about quarts in a gallon, that kind of thing. There's four of those. So we get a quartic. Okay. Um, after that, so there is a fifth degree. There's a sixth. So these degrees go to infinity. Okay. Um, there's a fifth degree we call it a quintic. Okay. You don't, you're not going to need to know that. And, and really, you're beyond, you know, we might briefly talk about cubics in this course a little bit. Um, but quadratics is kind of where we're going to focus most of our attention here from this point on to the end of the year. Okay. So up to this point, guys, we've been focusing on lines, right? Now we're going to start focusing on quadratics, okay, those curves, those, we call them parabolas, okay. Uh, but everything that we're going to talk about here in the first couple sections of Chapter 8 is the algebra that is necessary for us to actually investigate that curve, okay. So we need to learn some new algebra before we can start working with that thing. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's, that's the plan. Um, all right, so the bottom just kind of talks about the, the prefixes for uh, mono, bi, and tri. Talking about the idea that, you know, when I have polynomial, it's like calling everybody that's building a student. Everybody that's building is a student, right? No. Except you. Well, okay, so. I got you there. Because well, well, right, I knew you were going to ask to say that. Everyone younger than 18 in this building are students. No, you can. not younger than 18. Huh? Okay, but if, as long as I say they're younger than 18, they're students, right? Okay, so anybody that's younger than 18 in this building is a student. But can't I better classify some of those as sophomores? Better classify some of them as freshmen, some of them as seniors, that kind of thing? Okay, so it's the same idea with polynomials. Everything's a polynomial. But sometimes I can classify them better as a monomial, maybe like a freshman. Or maybe I can better classify them as a binomial, maybe like a sophomore. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Uh, so that's the idea of being able to categorize these and label them uh, appropriate in terms of the number of terms that they have. Okay, so let's just real quick, just let's identify these real quick. How many terms do you have here? Two, so you'd call that a binomial, right? What's the largest degree there? Third degree. Third degree, so that'd be a binomial, but we call it a third degree or a cubic, right? What about this one? How many terms do you have here? We have four. So, so it's because so, so we, we, we limit out at trinomial, right? We don't have anything for four. So we just call that a polynomial. Does that make sense? That's just kind of the generic term for anything that's greater than three. Same thing here. That's got, what, five terms? Or we're going to find out those five terms. What can I do with that 3x and that 7x? Combine them. That negative 6 and that negative 1, combine them. So we're actually end up with just three terms. That, that would be a triangle. Okay. Um, let's just keep going. How many terms do I have right here? Just highlighted there. Three. So that's a triangle, guys. Are we all paying attention here and listening? Actively engaged? Uh, so that middle one? Uh, I didn't say, but that would be a, what's the largest one up there? What's the largest degree of each term up there? It would be three, right? That's the biggest X one we see. So it would be a third degree. Um, here we got a binomial times, or binomial plus a binomial, right? Yeah. Two plus twos, or two terms plus two terms. Yes? So why did you combine the um, degree? Uh, we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about that here in a moment, okay? Um, so what I always ask you is, you know, we, we're going to start by having like terms, right? Okay, so when I ask us, can I actually add 3x and 4x squared uh, or 4x cubed together, can we do that, okay? There's one thing we have to be able to do first, okay? We have to be able to write these polynomials what we call standard form, okay? Uh, your textbook uses the word standard form. Some textbooks use the word descending order, okay? What does it mean to descend? To go down. To go down, okay? So if I'm putting it in descending order, the things that should be going down are the exponents. Does that make sense? So we're going to order these. What is the if I look at this first one here, what is the largest exponent? 
Okay, so we got 3x to the first plus 4x to the third. So this is the largest exponent, right? Now, the sign should go with it. So I'm going to write that first. And this all takes place because of what property allows you to move things around? Commutative. Commutative, okay? So I'm going to write that term first, so 4x cubed. And then what should I write next? Plus, Plus what? 3x to the first, okay? My terms now, my polynomial is being written in descending order, okay? Now, you would not write this, and you don't need to write this, but let's do this real quick. If I go 4x to the third, can I put in plus 0x squared? Plus 3x to the first? Plus then 0x to the zero? Does that kind of make sense? What's 0x squared the same as? This is why I said you wouldn't normally do this. That is just 0, right? So I'm adding 0 to this. Okay. What is 0x to the 0? 0. So it's adding 0, right? Those are just unique forms of 0. So we wouldn't usually write them in. But do you see how your exponents go from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0? Every single polynomial we come across should do that. Okay. Now you might have those things I highlighted a lot of times so you get into further algebra classes. You will put those in. They're called placeholders. Um, but it, it demonstrates that when we put it in descending order, you find your highest degree, and the next term will be one less than that, and the next term will be one less than that, and the next term will be one less than that. Does that make sense? All the way down to zero. So if I look at the next one, okay, we've got three, sorry, four terms here, right? What If I go through here, what is the largest one? Okay, so that is going to be my first term, right? So I write that one down. Okay, and I'm done with it. Once I've written it down, you can cross it out, do whatever you need to with it so you don't use it again. Now what, so that was power three. Is there any power twos? Okay, so I get that one, right? So I'm going to write that down. And now I'm done with that one, so I can wipe it away. What's the next power? So the first. So I'm going to write that down, so it'll be... All right, hold on, we'll talk about it. Just, let's, just, let's just focus right now on just rewriting them in order. Okay? So that would be, is that a positive 4x or a minus 4x? Positive 4x. So that's an understood plus sign out here, right? And then negative 2 is what's left over. And that negative 2 is, can I write it as negative 2x to the 0 like that? I, if, I, if I want to, and, the, and maybe the reason I would want to is just to demonstrate that your exponents go from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. But the reason I don't want to do that is because x to 0 is just what? Just 1. So I have just negative 2 times 1. So now that is in descending order. So you guys have been asking, well, can't I just combine some things here, right? Okay. That is actually fully simplified. You cannot combine any of those things in there. And, I, and we'll, we'll discuss this here uh, in a moment in the next the next uh, bullet, okay? Uh, this one, though, the third one, we can do a little bit of simplification, okay? Is that a positive 3x and a positive 7x, right? Those are like terms, yes? Okay? And the reason we know they're like terms is because they have the exact same variable with the exact same exponent. That's the identifier to telling you you have like terms. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, it'd be like saying, um, you know, if, let's see here. Right, let's do this. I used this, this example in the last class. So I've got some, I've got some K-cups here, right? Okay. How many K-cups I got here? Three. Two. Two, two K-cups. Kind of see, so we just yell random numbers. Okay, so two K-cups. Okay, let's say, let's say one of these is X. So what would I have then here? One X. I have two X's right here, right? So there's two X. They're on the same page here, right? Each K cup is an X. So now I have two X's, right? How many X's do I have there? Okay, why can I add those again and get four X? Because they're all K cups, right? So this would be two more X's, right? Seven. And two more x's, right? Okay. Our adding is 
shady. This is 2x plus 2x plus 2x plus 2x. You would have 8x's, right? Because I got 8k cups sitting here, right? Okay. Now, add, add that to it. Tell me, tell me in one word, one, give me one number in one word or one letter, okay? So when I add these things together, I say 8x or 8k cups, right? Give me one word and one number that I can get by adding these 8k cups together and these two markers. None. Tell me. None. You can't, right? Because markers are not k cups and k cups are not markers, right? For the same reason, 3x. And 7x, that's like taking these three K cups and these seven K cups, merge them together. How many K cups I got? I got 10. Okay? So I can merge those. So let's merge those. Okay? So I've got 5x squared. I got 10x's. What can I do with this negative 6 and this negative 1? What's negative 6 minus 1? Now we're adding. So, I just had, so if I delete everything up there except for the minus 6 and the minus 1, it's negative 6 minus 1. It should be negative 7, right? If you owe me 6 bucks and borrow a dollar from me, you owe me $7, right? Okay, so that thing right there. Now the question is, can I make that like 15x squared or 15x cubed or 15x's because of those first two terms, right? But remember, the 5x squared is like my markers and the 10x is my k cups. Can I add markers and K-cups and get one thing? No. No. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So here's, here's, here's that idea written out in mathematical terms. Okay. Make sure we're paying attention here, Hunter. Okay. It says like terms. You can only identify like terms if the monomials that you're trying to add. So when I say add, I mean subtract at the same time. Okay. So you're going to add them or subtract them. And we're going to use that cluster of operations using the word combine, right? That's what we've been using in the past, combine like terms, right? Okay. So you can only identify like terms if the monomials that you are trying to combine have the exact same variable, so meaning that they're all K-cups. Does that make sense? Or that they're all markers. And they have the exact same exponents. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? So the, way I kind of, I, the way I first kind of learned how to think about this is uh, like... Each monomial is like an individual person, and if they have same last names, okay, then I can put them in the same family. Does that make sense? And when I, when I merge them into the family, then I can talk about them as a family instead of the individual, okay? Well, then they're not in the same family. So, when we look at something like this, I'm going to do some examples here, okay? So you cannot combine the following into one term, 3x squared plus 5x cubed, okay? I cannot combine the 3 and the 5, okay, because the last name x squared and the last name x cubed are different. Does that make sense? So I can't merge those in and just say this is the family, okay? I, can't, I, don't, I would not know whether I write it as 8x squared or 8x cubed or 8x to the fifth. I don't know what to do with that. Does that make sense? Is everybody okay with that? You've heard the phrase uh, adding apples to oranges. You can't add or you can't compare apples to oranges, right? Okay. I can't add them or subtract them either. Okay. Apples are different than oranges. Oranges are different than apples. So if I give you three apples and I give you five oranges and I ask you how many apples do you have, you can only say three apples and I ask you how many oranges you have, you can only say five oranges, right? You can't say that you have like eight apple oranges or you could say eight fruits, but... Now I'm opening the door to say, okay, well, that means maybe I've got bananas and pears and for some reason I can't think of any other fruit. Um, okay, so is that is that going to say, Peter, the, the variable and exponent tell you whether you can combine them or not. So let's look at this example here. The, uh, the printer cut off a parenthesis here. So you might want to put that parenthesis in. Right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, when we add these things, I'm going to go, just like we did in chapter one, I'm going to go systematic. I'm going to go that term right there, and I'm going to see, are there any other terms that have x to the first power? No, no, 
no, and then no, right? So there's nothing going to add to that 4x. So I'm just going to write it as 4x. Okay? Now I'm going to get to the next one. Are there any other x squared that I can put with that 3x squared? Okay? And that's a positive 5, right? So 3x squared plus 5x squared is what? 3x squared plus 5x squared would be? 8x squared, right? So remember, the 3x squared means this. x squared plus x squared plus x squared, right? 5x squared means x squared plus x squared plus x squared plus x squared plus x squared, right? And if I went through and counted, I'd have 8 of those written down, right? So that's where my 8x squared come from. Okay? And then the last one, is there anything with that 1 that I can combine? Be that negative 3, right? And ultimately, that's an x to the 0 on both those, but we just look and say, okay, are there any constants that can be added together? That's negative 4, right? Uh, well, what's 1 plus negative 3? Oh, negative 2. Negative 2. Okay. So now, this is what they're going to ask you to do when you type these in. So I'm going to add those together. Is this in descending order? No. No. So what needs to come first? 2. Descending. Largest first. 8x. 8x squared. Oh, you said, okay, so 2 to the x. I, I I think you said 2 here. No. So that 2. Okay, so 8x squared. Okay, what's the next term? 4x squared. 4x. 4x, 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 4x is to the first right now. And then the last term will be? Two. The minus the 2. Okay. And it'd be x to the 0 if we're putting x there, right? Okay. Is that doable? That's descending order, right? Okay. Now, what degree would that be? What's the largest what's the largest exponent up there? Two. Two, so that's second degree, right? What's a what's a synonym for degree two? So with a Q. Um, nope. Close. Quadratic. Okay. How many terms do we have up there? Three. Three. So it's a polynomial, but we can better classify it as a three trinomial. Okay. Let's do the next one. Okay, if I do the next one, I've got 2x cubed. 2x cubed, are there any other x cubed? There's a plus 4x cubed, right? So how many x cubes does that give me? 6x cubed. Okay, the next term that I'm going to use is negative 2x squared. Are there any other negative 2x squared? Or any other x squared? No, so I'm just going to rewrite negative 2x squared. So if it doesn't combine with anything, it just gets rewritten... All alone. So this plus 5 has nothing to rewrite with. Is that in descending order? Is that in descending order? No, yeah, no. Yep. Exponents go from highest to smallest, right? How many terms do you have? Three. Three, so it could be called a trinomial. Largest power is three, so it's a degree three, which is a... Nope. If I raise something to the third power, you're cubing something, right? So degree oh, three... Cubing. Degree 3 is a cube. So in your homework, guys, some of your questions are going to ask you, once you get a result, can you identify it as a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or just a polynomial? And then they're going to ask you, okay, now that you know that, can you come in the degree, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, and if it's 1, 2, or 3, they'll ask you, is it linear, constant, or quadratic? Okay. Um, you guys do that one. Yes. So no, what time is it? We we run short time here. Yeah, now we have about five minutes. All right, we're all right. Uh, 1.5. I don't know why the clocks haven't changed yet on the tweeter. Oh, yeah, this one. They can't change. We're on it. this one. No, we're on this, this one. one. This one. This one. Yes. Yep. Yep. Hunter, how many x cubes you got? Okay, you see two of them written down, right? But the numbers out front tell you that you actually have more than two, correct? 
So out front, you really have eight. Okay? So eight X cubed. How many X squared do we have? Okay? Because negative three plus five, right? So positive two X squared. How many X's? One. Well, you, see, you you have only one term that has just X to the first, right? right. Yeah. But this tells you you have five of them. Because that five doesn't merge with anything, right? And then minus 12. Okay? So this is a, we would call this a polynomial. It's degree three, so we'd call it cubic. A lot of times we'll call it a cubic polynomial. They are in order. Okay? Now... The next thing I want to do is talk about how we subtract these things. This is, this is where we get to be making, once you get the hang of adding, it, it's, it's extremely easy and quick, but subtraction become, can, be, can become a problem, okay? So here's the idea. If I have, let's say I've got my 8K cups right here, right? Okay? And I want to subtract everything that is on this pink paper, Okay? Would you subtract just these two and then add that one, or would you subtract all three of them? So my pink paper is like parentheses here, right? Does that make sense? So if I've got, what have I got, 8K cups here, okay? No, so i got 10K cups here. 10K cups here, okay? And I want to remove three, so these three would cancel with maybe those three, right? Okay? So I'm going to have seven left over, correct? The idea here is that what is in this set of parentheses, those three K cups, I got to remove them all, right? So when I look at this up here, I have to remove not only the 5X squared, but I have to remove this negative 3 as well. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. So the quickest way to do this without getting yourself into uh, hot water with these is to distribute the negative to everything that's back here. So you're going to rewrite the top or the, the first set as 4x plus 3x squared plus 1. That doesn't change. But now when I distribute that negative, it's going to make this negative 5x squared. And it's going to make it, what's that 3 going to become? Positive 3, right? Okay. Now once I distribute that negative, now I go through an add. So now it just reverts back to what we've been doing. I've got a 4x here. Are there any other x's to the first power? Nope. So... So 4x gets written down. Uh, I've got 3x squared. Are there any other x squared? Negative 5x five. Five squared. So what's 3x squared minus 5x squared? Negative 2x two two squared. And now what can I do with that 1 and that positive 3? I only get 4. So now rewriting in descending order, which would be the first term? Okay, so it would be 2x. But what's the sign of this 2x squared? Remember, we've got to take that negative, right? And then I'll have plus 4x and plus 4. So it's degree 2, so it's quadratic. And it'd be a trinomial, right? Does that make sense on how to subtract them? Yes, Distribute the negative, and then it all turns into addition. So this would be 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x cubed minus 5, right? Distribute that negative. And now combine like terms. But remember, like terms have to have the exact same variable or variables with the exact same exponent. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, there's an 8.1 assignment online. Uh, tomorrow, beginning of class, we'll revisit this a little bit. Okay, do a couple more examples. Maybe see some of the stuff out of the homework. And then we'll move on to 8.2, which is talking about a GCF, greatest common factor. Yes?